Hey, Brian, how are you doing? Great. How are you doing, man? Doing good. Your voice is much deeper than it is on the YouTube. That's awesome. <laughs> Well, I did just wake up rather recently, so there may be a little uh, sleep fatigue still coming through. But, yeah, I'm also fighting a little allergy uh, stuff. W wife and I spent all day out in the uh, yard yesterday doing yard work and everything. So uh, I, th I think it'll it'll probably uh, soften up as we go a little deeper into coming. I, I haven't spoke much. My wife, she went to bed last night. We did a 100K stream. Mm -hmm. She went to go down in the kids' room to watch whatever while Reese and I were streaming. And then about 25 minutes after we started, we, we hit the 100K mark, and we got a $20 donation. And I said, that's it. I'm buying I'm buying blizzards for everybody. Reese, go get mom and tell her to go get us blizzards. <laughs> and he comes back to the mic, and he's like, dad, mom's asleep. Mom's asleep. So, um, yeah, she was sleeping all night. I had to pull her out of bed about 10 minutes ago and say, man, I got an interview. I need the computer and stuff. So, all right. so she's downstairs. I haven't talked to anybody. Reese wasn't in the talking mood this morning either, so you're the first. Oh, well, thank you for that. Hey, Happy Thumbs Gaming, happythumbsgaming.com. What's the brainchild? Who uh, who created it? So uh, essentially about 12, 12 years ago, I was pretty active working for an online tournament community. Okay. It was actually called Urgent Fury, and I was with a handful of like-minded people, uh, one of them actually happened to be part of my competitive clan. He suggested that maybe we start looking into some trophy achievement videos as we were both trophy achievement hunters. Mm -hmm. And that the quality of the videos that were out there were just less than stellar. We, we felt like for every one video you found, you had to dig through probably 20 or 25 videos before you found something of use that was maybe a little bit entertaining as well. So uh, it took us a while to get some ideas together. His wife actually came up with the name for us. We, we, we spent like three months looking for names, looking for branding ideas, you know, trying to come up with an acronym that was that worked well that didn't already exist. And mm -hmm. um, the wife shot out Happy Thumbs Gaming. And shortly after that, uh, Jeremy, who was my original partner, he came at me with an idea, kind of sketched it out. I, I made it happen in, in Adobe Illustrator. And from there, it just kind of took off. And, uh, you know, things like the Booyaka Show and, uh, you know, the Happy Thumbs Namer Wall and things like that just kind of all came all from throughout that. But, uh, yeah, Jer Jeremy and his wife were the original uh, creators, technically, and I was just kind of on board because of my talents and, and experience in the industry. You said 17 years? Wow. Great, great job for that. <laughs> Yeah, so so essentially you got to go back to like 2001, 2002, right around when SOCOM U.S. Navy SEALs released for PlayStation 2. Okay. Um, I and a couple of other buddies that lived locally started playing it. We found out this was one of those first games you could play online and you could have friends. And so we started joining other clans and found that things weren't working out. Before we knew it, we had our own clan and we had our own following and it actually grew. And yeah, we actually, uh, I ran that online competitive clan for about 11 years before it kind of started fizzing out, you know, but the creative direction more often than not gets passed on. And, and I was lucky enough that I had the drive, the motivation, and the tools to keep it going, um, you know, and, and the support of my wife. I mean, there's so many things in life that can get in the way, right? Like, oh, yeah. You know, jobs, kids, and, and uh, you know, I've just been really lucky to kind of get in on this wave early and, and ride it out to kind of see all sorts of different aspects of it. Like, I really want to get into the game development and stuff, but that's maybe the second half of my journey. I, I'm not sure. Like you said, the I'm an achievement whore for Xbox. So uh, sure. Happy Thumbs Gaming, and you guys have been my lifesaver for all the Lego games, my, my first one I really got into was uh, the Lego Star Wars. And so you guys definitely helped me out, get my achievement cred there. But as I'm 37 right now, and as a husband, and luckily, for good or for bad, I only have a dog. I don't have any kids. But some, <laughs> some of my best friends have two to three kids each. And they're they're still playing Fallout 4 and, and uh, the Fallout 76. I'm like... Where do you guys find time? You, you're, you're teachers. You uh, work in the medical profession. You have a wife. You have kids. When do you find time? When they go to sleep. So <laughs> it always boggles my mind, me trying to be the good husband of, oh, okay, well, I want to make sure I balance uh, time with a family versus time you have to do at work. How do you get the time to go and play and have fun? And just w with you incorporating Reese into it, getting your family involved too, how hard a struggle is that? Well, you know, getting schedules to a lineup is always one of the most difficult things, I think. But mm. 
you know, essentially, uh, you know, because I, I do this as, as kind of a primary, I, I don't know if you know this, but I also do web and graphic design. Okay. That's kind of what led me into this and how when Jeremy and his wife had this concept, they brought it to me because I was capable of actually producing a brand, producing a logo, producing websites and things that went with it. And that's where the partnership formed. It was his idea. He kind of had the initial money to get started. Um, but I had the assets that he was lacking, right? Mm. So uh, together – we made it work. And that's kind of what we've done here at the house. Um, you know, my wife, believe it or not, she cannot stand video games. Like, <laughs> she doesn't hate them in the sense of, like, you know, she's, like, repulsed by them. She, she just doesn't – she has too much stuff to do to sit down and pick up a controller. Yeah. And so but that's, that's worked out in mine and Reese's benefit because, because she has lots of schoolwork. She's, she's actually a special ed teacher at a high school here locally. Very cool. Um, and be, because she has – so much on her plate, which is, again, for better or for worse, you know, like you were saying, um, she has a lot of time that she needs to focus on that e even after school hours. Mm -hmm. So that's where Reese and I jump in. We're like, all right, we got two hours. Let's do this. And so we jump in and get to do that together because of, you know, other obligations in our household. And again, that's why I was saying I've been really lucky with my scenario because all things just kind of fall into place for me. And most situations or homes don't have that, and, and there's that battle, a struggle. Usually it's the parents and the kids versus, mm -hmm. you know, the, the husband and the wife. But, I mean, there's plenty of that out there, too. And, and um, for me, uh, you know, having – it's just all been at the right place at the right time. You know, Reese is the right age to play the games with me. You know, the wife is – it's just it's just all been kind of – I don't want to sound weird or superstitious or whatever, but it's almost kind of like fate, you know. It's just kind of all falling into place. And, I believe the agents call it yin and yang. <laughs> yes, yes, I will accept that. Happy Thumbs Gaming, as far as I've I've been aware of it, it's been primarily primarily the Lego games, correct? Yeah, um, essentially we started off doing anything and everything. If you go all the way back to day one on our channel, some of our first videos were for the Battlefield Three beta. Okay, that's a long time ago. Yeah, um, no, and, and we played lots of other stuff. I mean, we played some Max Payne. We played. Uh, you know, some Grand Theft Auto, which actually got us in trouble. And, and really? That was the yes, that was the pivotal moment for us. We actually, uh, Grand Theft Auto V had just come out. And as you guys know, there's definitely some adult-themed stuff that goes on in that game. Oh, yeah. Um, and I was having fun with it. You know, mm -hmm. as an adult myself, I was having fun being an adult in a fictional world. And I, I went... And I ended up uh, going into a, a, an adult nightclub. And, uh, <laughs> in game. I'll leave some, in, I'll leave some in, of the specifics out. But, in, in game, but correct? Yes, in okay. game. Okay. In game, okay. I, I'm a digital character in a digital adult club <laughs> having, you know, making it rain, digital money. And, and um, I actually got reported. And I'm not sure how it happened. If, if YouTube found it, if, if one of the analysts or something found it, or if one of my audience members saw it and just wasn't okay with it. We, Regardless of it, it got flagged, and it was brought to YouTube's attention. And YouTube actually gave me one of three strikes. Really? If you get three strikes, your channel gets shut down without any cause for, for you know, bringing it back or anything. They, they don't care. If, if you break those three rules, 99 times out of 100, they won't even talk to you about it. Was it because of the adult content, or was it some type of a trademark? Because I, I get a lot of that with the music industry as far as uh, the licenses and stuff like that, was it just some parent walked by and saw their kid watching the video and, and uh, got upset with that, or do you even know? Your guess is as good as mine as far as how it happened, but what was reported to me was uh, this file or this video has been flagged for inappropriate content. Now, here's the <laughs> irony of that, and this is what really frustrates me. So, so that was the pivotal moment when I switched and we kind of went family-friendly. Okay. But, but even worse than that, we had a network partner. Well, we, we uh, they kind of call them talent managers. Well, you know, depending on who you are, it, it varies. But basically, this company looks out for us. They have a few extra perks where they'll, you know, give us some copyright-free music or maybe some help if we get hit with a copyright strike. Mm -hmm. um, but these guys were actually encouraging me, telling me, yes, if, if people are watching your videos, keep doing it. I got like 70,000 views in less than 12 hours, and we only had like 10,000 subscribers at the time of this. So I was kind of freaking out going... This is a huge success. This is borderline viral, and, and you know, should we keep doing this stuff? Because we've predominantly done family-friendly. And the guy said, no, no, no. If you're getting good views, do it. Well, like 12 hours later, we get hit with that copyright. Oh, man. And simultaneously, I also got an email 
from YouTube. So this is where it gets really weird and why I kind of disagree with the platform in general. But, but they actually were advertising for a new game that Sony had just released. Mm-hmm. It was called The Evil Within. And it was some of the most gruesome, gory graphics and stuff. That, that I, I mean, a person gets chopped in half and, and they drag him across the room. And I mean, it's, it's very violent and gory. And, and YouTube is advertising this. And sending this, Sony has paid them to, and they were accepting this, sending this to all their people. Meanwhile, I'm getting flagged for being in an adult nightclub, throwing a few dollars <laughs> out of stage. It goes, when that strike happened, I, I curled up in a ball, Tim, and, I, and I've, I've literally gone full family friendly since then. And, and that's why we focused on the Lego. We found that Lego was a hit. We found that uh, lots of good can come, lots of ages. I mean, we see ages from like three years old to like 73 years old. And um, and that's huge, and we love that. It, it, you know, a lot of people do the YouTube stuff for fame and money. Like, I don't want the fame. Like, I don't. I don't know if you've ever noticed, but I don't ever call my viewers fans. Yeah. I don't feel that I'm above. They're, they're my viewers. They're my people who support me and watch me, but they're not fans to me. They're they're my equals, and I've always tried to embrace that rather than than run for it. So that that helping and giving back has really been the spark. But the reason for the family friendly has been the fear of being shut down and, and the demonetization, you know? So Because you've made it rain on a digital prostitute. Okay. Right. Yes, yes. And, and, you know, for the record, too, um, I, I, for what it's worth, I, I have every piece of, of digital content that I have created since I started Happy Thumbs, I have in an archive. And I keep saying that I'm going to pull out the archive and get that video back out and, and post it elsewhere just to show people because I, like to me it wasn't that bad it wasn't something that warranted as much punishment as it seemed at the time right like i i, I still have my channel everything's good but i mean it struck the fear in me you know mm-hmm. and, and i've been very careful as to what i say and what i upload since then do you ever suffer from uh, i guess you could say gamer fatigue absolutely or, or, okay i was gonna say because I know in order to, uh, with like the family friendly and the Lego games, I have to play those things probably at least two and a half times all the way through in order to get everything. But I watch your videos and when you're doing the completion and the story walkthroughs and the free plays, you don't have all the additional characters right off the bat in each video. So that means like you have to delete files and restart from the beginning. How, about how many times do you have to play a traditional Lego game all the way through? Well, essentially, the way I work is uh, after each time I complete a level or a section or do something of, you know, something of importance, I will actually save the game. Like, I'll quit it, I'll save it, and I'll uh, save it to an external USB drive. That allows me to go back if I make any mistakes or do anything. However, the way that the game has been designed, it, it does allow me to go through and play the whole story mode. And, and be honest with you Mm -hmm. the reason why we actually release those story videos is to buy the channel and the team some time the free play videos as you know are the meat and potatoes that's where the collectibles are that's where the good information that people are searching for is oh yeah so the story is more of like the adventure it's kind of the fun it's it's the part of the game that the developers intend for you to enjoy before you start your madness of collecting Mm -hmm. and so for us, while I'm doing those stories, I have a guy or sometimes two or three in the background going through you know, full speed trying to get those collectibles, find the locations, document them, write my trophy achievement guides so that when I get through the story, that all that information is ready for me and all I have to do is follow it and record it. So that's how I'm able to do that. And, and essentially, more often than not, it's a one time through the game as it's intended to be played, but it's always two full times through the storyline because you got to go through and, and play the story and then come back and with those collectibles or the characters that you get to get those collectibles. So there's a lot of time. Uh, I do definitely get game fatigue. I think the, the biggest hurdle that I have, and I hear a lot of other content creators suffer with this, is just the instability or the flux of the platform. Like, for example, in the last 28 days, I've had over... 1,500 new subscribers. We just crossed the 100,000 subscriber mark last night live on stream. That's awesome, Yet, man. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Yet my financial side of things has literally dropped. In the last 28 days, I've literally seen my money plummet probably 35 to 
how much do you even get from YouTube? Because uh, I have a, a buddy who works here at the radio station with me, John Riggs, uh, Riggs Gaming. He does like open cart surgeries on uh, retro games and stuff like that. And and he sh- he showed me his YouTube paychecks of two or three cents. And so uh, now, granted, I'm not sure what his subscriber count is. I've always heard it's like, oh, YouTube's fun, but you have to get to an extremely high level before you can call it your own day job. All right, so here, here's the best example I can give that brings people who aren't in the know into the know. Because okay. most people know this analogy. You ever had some used games? You ever take it to GameStop? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so you, you're feeling what I'm saying here. Yes. Essentially, it's it's a numbers game. It, it's a it's a huge numbers game, and at the end of the day, it doesn't seem. Um, I don't know if I want to use the word fair because the platform is set up in a way for people to succeed if they do it right. However, it gets complicated. But essentially, uh, it's a numbers game. So, for me, um, with my multi partner network, uh, I actually have a little bit higher CPM. So CPM is the rate in which Google pays people. You think it's cost per million because of how it's worded, but it's actually cost per thousand. So essentially the CPM is the the base rate or your kind of, um, you know, your your minimum wage kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And that then gets multiplied by your views. Those views obtain ads. You know, it's a numbers game. So the way it generally works, though, is for every 1,000 views you get, you yield anywhere from 3 to $7, whatever the CPM is on average. And that fluctuates based on, you know, people advertising. So, like, holidays, Super Bowl, summertime, back mm-hmm. to school, all the times where companies are going, okay, we need our name out there, we need to advertise. That's when that CPM fluxes and it gets higher. Those are the times of the year, like, you know, Christmas and you know, Thanksgiving, Black Friday, those are the best months of the year for CPM. Sometimes it gets to $10, 15 12, $20, mm-hmm. which then all of a sudden it, it adds up real fast. But for me, you know, you can do the math. I, I get about 500,000 views a month, and, you know, you get about $3 per thousand. So, you know, it kind of kind of loosely breaks out in there. It's not much. It's not much. It's and enough for blizzards. Have, huh? It's enough for blizzards. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Uh, you know, for me, I've had a, a secondary job, web and graphic design, that I've been able to do uh, at home as well. And that's ultimately how I've been able to get through kind of these earlier years. Uh, you know, but even at the 100,000 subscriber mark, it isn't all, you know, peaches and, and, and dreams. It, it's definitely still work. Uh, it's still minimal. I mean, I'm, I'm still, you know, low end of the pay scale for, <laughs> you know. And, and, you know, I tell some of my friends who have, you know, just regular average job, they probably make as much as I do in three days as I do in a month. Okay. Um, so it's not much, but mm-hmm. it's, it's you know, there's hope. There's other things, too, sponsorships, products. There's there's other stuff that does come in that kind of helps. I don't know if I'd say compensate, but it, it makes it easier. Um, but, yes, that that's, that's the hurdle I have is the drive because – as soon as you hit something or you do something well, like we just hit a hundred thousand, um, you know, then I look down and I see my, my, my estimated money total and I'm like, what? okay, you know, it's kind of deflating. So, mm-hmm. um, as far as the games go, you know, I don't have as much fatigue with the games as I, the motivation to keep going sometimes. Um, it's, it's hard to say, okay, let's put four hours into this video when I know I'm going to get 75 cents for it over three weeks worth of views. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, like man uh but you know the catalog the archive the, the repetition the, the positivity you know I, if i keep going it keeps going and i keep growing and that's, that's what i keep doing that's it's, what keeps me rolling it's that old saying find a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life but it's still <laughs> work <laughs> exactly and it is too it is you know i i sometimes spend you know, up to 16 hours in one day working on, you know, various projects and stuff. And, and sometimes it's not all, it doesn't all make it to the front end. Sometimes it's like graphics that are part of another element or, you know, just building stuff. You know, I, I have a, you're in broadcast, you probably have fancy buttons that you press for different sounds and stuff. Yep. Uh, Elgato makes what they call a stream deck and it allows me to do some of that stuff from my side. So I've got some cool memes and sound effects and stuff. But programming all that stuff, people are like, it takes a lot of time. Mm-hmm. You know, you got to find what you want, which is sometimes difficult, or making And then you got to add it to it, and then you got to test it. So there's lots that goes into it. Lots. You mentioned Elgato. What other type of uh, programs or uh, equipment do you use to record? Because I know, like, you play on the PlayStation 4 from uh, 
what I can tell from most of the videos I've watched. Yeah, I have all of the current gen consoles and plenty of the older ones too. Uh, okay. We do most of our streaming from the PS4. Uh, I use an Elgato capture device in order to connect my systems to my computers. Okay. And then I use a piece of software called Online Broadcasting Software, more commonly known as OBS. It is a free piece of software and it is highly intuitive and very easy to use. Um, I definitely recommend it. Lots of bells and whistles you can add to it. Uh, and again, it's free. So I, I use those two pieces. So Elgato basically talks to the computer and then the computer is run by OBS. And then, you know, OBS links to some other third-party stuff that allows me to have, like, that. you know, when I get a new sub, it talks to my stream, and it'll put, like, a notification up in stream. So, so there's some other stuff going on. So Streamlabs would be who I use for the notification pop-ups, the mm -hmm. donations. Like, when I get a donation, it pops up on screen and tells us. And, um, and then OBS for the software, and then Elgato for the hardware. With computers and, and the different software, we understand, like, with glitches, but, man... First off, I need to thank you because uh, you and Tyler P were some of my uh, angels when it came to my frustration with the uh, one of the latest Lego games of DC Super Villains. Absolutely sure. love the game, but man, that had some glitches in it. And uh, you know, I hear lots about that, and I don't know what it is, but I somehow never seem to find those glitches. Really? And, 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 and yes, it is so weird, Tim. Like I, I don't understand. Uh, you know, usually my guide writers will find them. And, and I don't know if it's because of the awareness that they tell me and then somehow I can avoid certain stuff mm -hmm. or what. But, you know, people over – as long as I've been doing this, I get reports. Oh, there's not 10 many kits in this level. There's 11. You know, there's these glitches that people find that aren't intended from the developers. And, and I don't seem to ever run into them. I've never run into a Lego game situation where I couldn't finish it because of a weird glitch. And I hear about it every game that comes out. There's always at least a dozen people – that have to replay the entire game due to some weird save, corrupt data file, or something, you know? And I just, I never, it, it's weird. I, I got I got really lucky in that department so far. I'm knocking on wood. Yeah, I, I was going to say. I'm knocking on wood. Uh, but, you know, I've been really lucky in that department. But, yes, they happen more often than anybody would care to see. Do you think that's just because the games are getting bigger and badder or that the industry is trying to push them out faster, that... They have to release the uh, patches later on to complete the game. I think, I think it's a combo of both of those. And, and you know, sometimes, too, you, you, with development, software is tricky, you know. And, mm -hmm. and um, you know, and all it takes is one unforeseen thing to happen, and all of a sudden 25 other things happen. That's that domino effect with the code. And all it takes is one person flying from the left side of the map to go to the right, which had never been done before, it, you know, it breaks it. And so... Uh, they have to find those things on the fly and try and fix them. And, yeah, it, it's been tough. The games lately seem to be more broken on release than complete. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. It's tough. I, I, I always recommend that people follow our playlist order. And I know that sounds weird, mm -hmm. but knowing that when I do it that way, when I follow the game as it's pretty much intended to be played, rather than, like, let's say some people jump into story – and they get a couple levels in, and all of a sudden they have access to that open world. Yeah, It's so tempting to go, oh, there's a gold brick, or oh, there's this character. Let me go help this guy. And, and I don't ever do that. I, I refrain from doing that so that I can record those areas all in one video. So that's, mm -hmm. that's why I do it. It's not because of any other reason. But in the end, I do it very methodically, and it almost seems like that's how the developers wanted it to be done too – and therefore, I don't seem to run into those issues. And so when people jump into the free roam and start getting collectibles out of order, I think it maybe kind of throws the game off and it doesn't know what to do. And it puts it in that state where it's unfamiliar territory and anything could happen. Mm -hmm. That's speculation, of course. I, I, I don't have a ton of like debugging, this, but that, that's kind of my theory. On it. Well, it makes sense to me, especially like you said, you're, you're one of the very few and uh, lucky ones who have not <clears throat> experienced a game glitch when it comes to the Lego games, man. With WB hooking you guys up with an early promo, how did you guys even find out that you were on WB's radar? So this has been like the quest of all quests, yeah, right? So yeah. we, we, we have been trying to get, you know, even just noticed by them for years. And, and you know, we've attended various game cons, packs, and things like that. And, and we've sat in line for hours. We've waited. We, we've, oh, they're out to lunch. They'll be back in 20 minutes, you know, so we'll come back in 20 minutes and they won't be there. We've tried to track down anybody 
any point of contact and failed miserably. <laughs> and then it was kind of weird because, like, all of a sudden one day we just got this email, and it was uh, it was from so, – so it's weird. Warner Brothers sponsors us, but they actually pay a third-party company to handle all the transactions and all the communications. So I have another company that actually is kind of the middleman, mm-hmm. and they reached out to me, and I didn't recognize it. It wasn't anything about WB or anything, and so I saw this email – and I figured it was just another one of those phishing scams, trying to get some sort of information out of me via email that would somehow turn around and, and be bad news for me. And so I was very careful with my response, but it seemed too good to be true. And they were offering me access to the next Lego game. So I, I kind of poked around and asked a few questions, got the responses I wanted, and then gave them my address. And before I knew it, I had a package in the mail. And then Then the wave hit, and we were just getting package after package after package. We were getting shoes. We were getting – we got all sorts of stuff. There was like this 15-month spree of just awesomeness. We got a box that I could barely lift up, um, and it was filled with like seven or eight big-time Lego sets, like the big ones. And it had uh, T-shirts and phone covers, and it was all uh, promotion for the Lego Ninjago movie Mm -hmm. video game. And, uh, you know, and so it's just – it's been a blessing. Really, it has. It, it's, uh, you know, to be honest with you, I still have never asked who or how they found us. I, I don't want to ask questions and ruin what we got going. So, yeah. um, and, and, and essentially, you know, we finally asked. So we get emails periodically from them. But I actually reached out to them and said, hey, what were the chances of us maybe getting on the early access list? We see these other people out there. And they responded and said, yeah, no problem. Here you go. And, and we got it sent. So uh, we, we were kind of upset because we'd been sponsored for probably about two and a half years now, and we'd never asked for any early access or anything. And, and so we thought, gosh, was that all we had to do was ask? <laughs> so we're hoping that it'll continue to be that way um, as things go on now. And But at the same time, we're, we're totally understanding that we may not get another thing from them, too. So there's no contract written. But we have had to sign various papers. Every year we have to sign paperwork. Basically says that we're going to disclose that we had gifts given to us, that we do have a sponsorship. Basically, not to hide it. Yeah. Uh, to to, pre- to prevent any unbiased reviews or or you know marketing for them. So, so yes, we are sponsored by Warner Brothers. We're, it's one of those things where like I try not to gloat about it, but yet I have to talk about it. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of a catch twenty two, but definitely. Uh, Definitely awesome. And uh, now that we hit 100,000, we've actually been told by a couple of other companies, like El Gato being one of them, uh, that, you know, hit us up when you hit 100K and we'll talk again. So, you know, there's no promises being made, but but the hope and dreams are is that we'll get these sponsorships. And not only will it help us internally, but the real goal is to get stuff to give back. Like we want to be able to give El Gato capture cards to people you know and we want to be able to pass out more lego sets like we do a giveaway every friday and that is right out of our own pocket Mm -hmm. no sponsorship and we've done that almost since day one and um you know and we love doing that you know we we love giving back we we love the the you know the love we get for us giving the love it's that reciprocal awesomeness and and we very much appreciate it yeah, and uh, your your viewers, your fans, we appreciate it as well, man. That's that's just <laughs> epic. All right, now we're getting into the little uh, funness, and then I'll, I, I won't keep too much of your time because I know uh, you woke up early and you guys have been partying with your 100,000 subscribers. That's epic. Woohoo! Favorite Lego game. Go. Lego City Undercover by far. I own oh, that sorry, one. Go ahead. I own that one. I have not turned it on yet. My back catalog with Lego games. Like like I mentioned earlier, the the gaming fatigue. I beat one. It takes me roughly about forty three hours. Which Lego Star Wars three, they had that little counter clock that showed you how many hours you put in on the game, and oh, that was heartbreaking. Like, well, that's a week's worth of work. Uh, so after I beat a Lego game, I have to take about a month break from it. So my back catalog is filled, but Lego City Undercover. Okay. It so you know I'm an '80s kid, okay. um, and there is so much. 80s reference in that from Starsky and Hutch to, I mean you name it and it's stuff that you would never expect I mean they've even got like Shawshank Redemption re- reference I mean it's wow and it's done in such a comical way it is essentially a Grand Theft Auto type experience where it is open world <laughs> you can jump into anybody's car and take it but it doesn't have all that extra adult stuff. It, it's a Grand Theft Auto for all ages, if that makes any sense at all. So you can't um, you can't go into a brothel and make it rain gold and silver coins, right? 
no, there's unfortunately <laughs> no way to make it rain studs, unfortunately. Uh, but but there are plenty of other things, and there's so many. I mean, there's very very there's so many laugh out loud moments and, and, and very much enjoyable gameplay. It, it's it is really long. It's one of the longer games, one of the more uh, collectible heavy experiences. And and for me, I played it on the PS4 which was kind of the second coming of it. Originally, it was created for the Nintendo Wii U, yeah. and it was an exclusive. So I missed out on that. It was really, I almost bought a Wii U just to play that game, and I, I just couldn't justify it, though. Mm-hmm. Um, so having it come out on the PS4 was amazing. But there, you could tell that there was definitely some differences um, that almost didn't make sense, because a lot of it was geared towards the... Uh, the Nintendo world. So you saw things like, uh, you know, Bullet Bill, the big bullet that you see that shoots at you in the Mario Brothers series. Mm-hmm. He was involved in there. There was the stars, were the stars right out of like that, mm-hmm. you know, from Mario Brothers. And like, so lots of stuff had to be changed, but it was still a great experience. And I highly recommend it. And I've got my fingers crossed that one of the next announcements we get is Lego City Undercover. Too. All right. From your favorite to least favorite, I know which one mine is. So I'll, I'll go ahead and say it. As epic as the games were, the Lego Lord of the Rings, that and or The Hobbit, both those, man, those those took forever. Those are actually both of mine, too. You can take your pick of which one. They, they The stories were great. I'm a Tolkien fan. Yep. I, I, I'm terrible at, at the Tolkienology. Like, I slaughter all the names and everything, and it really drove people nuts when I was doing the videos. <laughs> but, you know... The reasons I had problems with it was just the the primitive nature of the game. It seemed like the people who were making it maybe had never made a Lego game before, and like the puzzles weren't working right. There was that wizard, the Gandalf wizard. You had to stack those blocks up in the right order and like make like a stairway. Mm-hmm. It just didn't seem to work right, and I would get so mad at that game. And it's a kids' game, and I'm an adult yelling at my TV, and that just didn't seem right. So. Uh, those were definitely my least favorite, it, but it wasn't the story, or it was just the the functionality of it. Like if they would have cleaned it up, or maybe even updated it to fix some of those bugs, mm-hmm. and maybe they have by now. But by far, those are those are the most problematic Lego games to date. Therefore, being my least favorite. Now, I will say uh, for anybody watching and listening to this, if by chance you do have, and I just found this out uh, a couple weeks ago, if you do by chance have either the Lego Lord of the Rings or the Lego Hobbit game. Keep it because you cannot buy that anymore. Um, they lost the rights to the game, so there's no new copies being made. Uh, so if you see it at uh, a, a used game store, man, buy that thing up, especially with a, a Lord of the Rings coming out on Amazon soon. It wouldn't surprise me if those might hop back up in, in uh, value. So. Well, I would agree with that 100% and take it even further that it's also been my understanding that they removed all digital versions of it, too. So, like, yep. you can't buy it in the Steam store. You can't buy it on the PlayStation store. Uh, and it is. It's exactly due to them losing their licensing to the game and, and the lack of renewal. And I've also heard, just to add a little bit onto that, uh, this is part of the aftermath of what happened with Dimension. So uh, it's my understanding that they actually had a new contract ready to release more stuff and they were going to potentially bring more Lord of the Rings characters and, and content to the Lego Dimensions year three stuff that we never got. Hmm. Um, and so when that deal kind of fell through, I think they kind of looked at it and were like, we don't have any other way or reason to release any new content anywhere else because they weren't going to do a standalone game. They already, you know, because they were supposed to give us that third Hobbit game, right? There was the, the third yeah, Hobbit so- movie that never made it to digital or disc. And, and so they even scrapped that and were like, nah, we're not even going to go. That's been my understanding. So okay. um, definitely grab a copy if you got it. I still got all mine. Uh, and, and who knows? That's going to be one of those collectibles that in 10 years could be worth Five cents or $500. You never know. <laughs> and then if you take it to a certain game retailers, they'll give you two cents for it for a used copy. Yeah, divide that by 7000 and that's pretty much your estimated value. <laughs> HappyThumbsGaming.com. Uh, of course, Brian, that's you, your son, Reese. Uh, who's Tyler P.? And I don't think I've ever heard the mention of Doug, but I was looking at your guys' website. Who's Doug? All right, so uh, just going back to the beginning, essentially Jeremy and I started Happy Thumbs. Jeremy's actually active uh, in the Navy. He's actually a, a, a pilot in the cool. Navy now. And that's ultimately where he had to finally we, – we came to a crossroad where he was just busy, 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 married, kid, you know, flight school, all this stuff, just didn't have time. 
Uh, so, so he stepped down. I actually bought the company, bought him out, his shares out, and continued. And right as uh, Jeremy transitioned out, I actually met Doug. Doug was a trophy achievement guide writer over at PlayStationTrophies.org, I guess it is. Okay. Um, and he was actually looking for some access to our videos to accompany his trophy achievement guide that he had written. And we actually hit it off, and, and he opted to come work for us for a few years, and he actually did. He wrote quite a few guides for us. In fact, he even did the videos for the Lego Star Wars 3. Okay. He, it, it, a little funny bit about this. He'd never seen Star Wars. He knew nothing about Star Wars, and he was like, I didn't know that when he said he would do the game. And so he's like slaughtering all these names. He doesn't know who C-3PO <laughs> is or Chewbacca. And like watching it, it is so cringy as a Star Wars fan because – he doesn't even know, like, the Millennium Falcon or nothing. He's like, go get in the spaceship. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, it's the Falcon, you know. And, and so really funny. It's almost fun just to watch those just for the cringe factor. Uh, but Doug actually worked for us for quite a few years and, um, and then got real deep into his college stuff. Uh, same kind of thing. Family life came up. He got a, he, uh, I think he's engaged now, and um, they, they have a kid. And, and so uh, lots of stuff going on there. And basically right as things were – Starting to transition for Doug, I ran in and met Tyler P. And so Tyler P. has been our guide writer for quite some time. But it's, it's I mean, it's like clockwork. Here we are again. Life has, Tyler got promoted and a bunch of stuff happened in his life. And he was not able to continue doing the daily deeds. Then comes in Gary and Nick. So currently, you know, Reese has always been around for the ride. He's He's 14 now, so he's getting into that, like, I don't really want to hang out with mom and dad kind of stuff. But, you know, he's always been around to help me with videos, to, to do unboxings, to do Lego speed builds. We do a lot of builds together mm -hmm. on, on camera. Um, and then now, uh, you know, my guide writers now are in training, but uh, Tyler uh, is no longer uh, available for us. So, uh, you know, shout out to all those guys. I mean, without those names that I just named, I wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be having this conversation. Like, it has really, truly been a group effort, and, and I mean, yes, I've been on the forefront with the videos and the voice, but, I, I mean, the knowledge and the info has never been me. It's always been them. And and so, you know, shout out to those guys. Thank you, you know, Gary, Tyler, Nick, Doug, Jeremy, you know, Mark. I mean, there's been a bunch of people over the years. You know, eight, eight nine years we've been going at this now, full speed ahead. It's been in concept for about 10 years. So, yeah, it's, it's been a fun journey and lots lots of help. Like I said, I wouldn't have been able to be where I'm at right now if it weren't for them. All righty, very cool. Brian with Happy Thumbs Gaming, happythumbsgaming.com. Uh, you can search them on YouTube, uh, just uh, HTG, hashtag HTG, and they're also their Facebook page. One last question, Brian. When do you Let's think go. When do you think we will get LEGO VR? Wow, that's actually a great question. I, I have not had that asked. I, I thought I'd heard them all. Um, you know, as somebody who gets very nauseous with the VR, I hope it's not soon because that'll be a high expectation of me. I, I mean, Dramamine it might be my new sponsor if that happens. I, I'm just saying because I don't do well. I, I own a VR, but I can't do it for more than about 10 minutes before the oldness in me starts to show. So... Um, I hope it's soon, though. I think that'd be a nice, a, a nice jump and, and, and something totally different, right? And so I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. And, and that's a great idea, Tim. Hopefully somebody will hear this and, and they'll make it a reality for us. Well, either either uh, Lego VR or I would still love to see Lego Doom. Yes. <laughs> I've, been, I've been crying for a Lego shooter for years. I know that's kind of like uh, almost a conflict of interest because there's kind of like the – the violence versus the family friendly aspects, but I'd love to see it. Shut up and take my money. You know, if you, you know, if you can have Lego Deadpool run around chopping people's heads off and grabbing the studs, I don't see why you can't have a Lego demon burst out into red studage. I mean I I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. All right, Brian, happy thumbs gaming. Thank you so much, my friend. Thanks, Tim.